What's up guys, welcome back to part 7 of the How to Make a VR Game series. As always, if you would like to support our channel so we can bring you better and more content, please consider subscribing to the channel or supporting us on Patreon where you can get access to our full source code. In the last episode we showed you how to teleport around by using the right thumbstick and we wrote our first hand controller that can switch between our grab hand and our teleport hand. In this video we are going to add another hand to our hand parents. Namely, we are going to implement the UI hand. We are going to show you how to interact with a UI in VR but also grab objects from a distance when hovering over the object and pressing our grab button. Let's jump into Unity. Firstly, like the last time, we are going to create a new hand and put it on the right hand. We need the exact same components as the teleport hand, so we are just going to copy that and rename it to right hand UI. Now we have to obviously change some things. Like in the teleport hand, we want to have an input action disabled by default, because we will enable them with a script again. We will change this input action back to select because we want to be able to select objects with our ray. So we're going to look for right hand and then select. Then we are also going to disable the XR ray interactor since we don't want to have the ray always active just like we did for our teleport hand. By the way guys, if you have a more simple setup and you don't want to switch your hands on and off, you can actually keep the ray activated but simply turn the invalid color off. So you will only see your ray interactor whenever you hover over an object that you want to select. You can just go on your invalid color gradient, press up here and you can see alpha. Just turn off the alpha, which means your color will be invisible. Now, if you move your hand, you will always see your ray if you hover over a layer that you can interact with but otherwise your ray will just be invisible. The benefit of that would be that you don't need any additional logic to enable the ray interactor by performing any input action. Let's turn this back and continue with our tutorial. Let's go back up and then as always we assign our XR origin. This is already done here. Now for our UI hand we of course need other layers. We first want to be able to interact with a UI layer. So let's create a UI layer here. Go back to our hand. Choose nothing to clear and then choose UI. We also want to be able to grab interactable objects. So choose interactable here as well. Then we are going to change the line type back to a straight line. And the raycast mask, we can leave it on everything. Again, here you can choose each layer that you want the ray to be blocked by. So each of these layers, our ray will be blocked, except for our UI and interactable layer, of course. This will have the effect that our ray cast is not just going through objects, but rather staying in front of them, which gives you a nice effect. Now we need to define a new input action that when performed enables our UI hand. Therefore, we open our input action map again just type in XRI and open our map. First we need to know on which hand we want to add the new input action. We want to have it on our right hand, so let's go to right hand interaction and let's create our first custom action. Click here on the plus and give it a name. We're going to name it UI mode activate. We make sure that our action type is a button, so we basically know true or false if the button is pressed. Lastly, we need a binding, so actually the button on the controller that should be clicked to activate this action. We can go on here, choose generic XR controller and then search for a button that we want to press to activate the action. Therefore we go to XR controller, right hand, optional controls and let's say we want to activate our input action with the primary button. This is the first button on the right controller. Here you can basically add as many buttons as you want. As you can see, there are endless possible buttons that mostly work for multiple devices and not just your Oculus. Also, you can just add buttons for your mouse or keyboard, which may be helpful for you for testing, for example. So let's say you don't have a VR headset, 
or it's too cumbersome for you to test with a headset, you can just add another binding. Go up here, choose keyboard, go to your keyboard layout and then choose the button that you want to activate the action on. So let's say if you press the key C, you will also activate this UI mode activate. All right, but let's remove that. And now we need a controller for our UI hand. So let's save this and go back and open our scripts folder. Let's create a new script that is called UI controller. The UI controller will be really similar to the hand controller. So let's open the hand controller and go from there. All right, guys, I hope you still remember how the script worked from last time. When we press the input action reference, which was the teleport, we wanted to disable the XR direct interactor on our base hand, which is responsible for grabbing objects, and in turn, enable the input action on our teleport hand so we can teleport and also enable our XRay interactor to show us where to teleport to. We subscribe to two events, which tell us when the input action is performed and when it is cancelled. We unsubscribe to these events in the onDisable method, and in between here we executed our commands. In teleport mode activate, we disabled the XR direct interactor on our base hand, activated the ray interactor on our teleport hand, as well as the input actions on our teleport hand. If we then cancel the input action, we wanted to wait for a little bit, so we have enough time to actually teleport and then set the direct interactor true again and our components on our teleport hand to false again. We're going to do the exact same thing for our UI controller, which means we don't really have to write any new code today. Let's also change this name, because this script was specifically for the teleport hand. So let's call it teleport controller. Make sure that you also change the name in Unity, otherwise you will get an error. Let's copy our whole code and paste it into our new script. And that's all we have to do guys. Let's change the names to fit to our UI hand and then let's go back to Unity. Now we're going to set up our right hand parent like the last time. Let's add the new script to our hand and then assign all the objects we need. And here we are going to choose the UI mode activate on the right hand. So now before we test, we need to make sure that on the objects we want to grab with our XR Ray Interactor, we have the XR Grab Interactable script and the interaction layer mask is set to either interactable or UI or both. Let's create some cubes and set them up for grabbing. Alright guys, so let's press the A button on our right hand controller and then press the grab button and we can see that we can grab the cubes that are interactable layer. We can even grab the cubes that we set up before and it works perfectly. We can even distance grab our gun, so let's test that. Nice. Perfect guys, now we already are able to grab objects with our Ray Interactor, but now let's look at how to interact with a UI. For that, we right click into our hierarchy, go down to XR and choose the UI canvas. You will see that it adds an event system automatically. Make sure that it says XR UI input module. Then let's look at our canvas. We have different render modes, world space means 
that the canvas is in our 3D world and there are other modes, for example overlay, which means it's just overlaid over our camera so we will see it in front of our face all the time. We don't want that in VR, so let's keep it on world space. Make sure that you always assign the event camera. This is really important, otherwise it will not work. Furthermore, on our camera we have to make sure that the main camera tag is set on main camera. Perfect. Other than that, we don't have to do anything. On your canvas, just make sure that you have the track device graphic ray caster. And now we are ready to add some objects to our canvas, such as buttons, sliders and dropdowns. Therefore, we right click on our canvas, go to UI, and then for example, we're gonna add a button. For these buttons, we need Text Mesh Pro, which gives us a clearer image. Just import Text Mesh Pro Essentials. And that's all we need. You can see that the button is huge, but it is not recommended to scale down the whole parent. So rather change the width and the height of your button or change the scale if the button is the last child. Which means if you have another child or another object under your button, please refrain from changing the scale since this can cause weird behavior. Since the button is our last object, we can change the scale here to about 0.1 or even 0.01. Do that for all the sides. And this is about right. We just have to turn around the canvas a little bit. Maybe move it a little bit down and back. And now we have a button. Let's also add a slider. And then we are going to add a drop down. On these Text Mesh Pro components, you can change the color when you hover over the object, when you press the object or when the object is not interacted with at all. You can adjust this how you like. So let's for example change this color to red and the highlight color to blue. And let's not forget to add the UI layer to our whole canvas. Let's just make sure that all the children have the UI layer. And then let's test it. All right, guys, let's turn to our canvas. Press our ray again on the A button. And you can see that we can now interact with our UI elements. If you press now activate, which is on our trigger button, you can see that we can activate our elements. We can move sliders, press buttons, or choose something from a drop down. Perfect. And that's it guys, today we looked at how to set up another hand in our XR rig, we can interact with UI elements and game objects as well, with the help of an XR ray interactor. In the next video we are going to learn about sockets in VR, which let you attach objects somewhere and can be really helpful in games and processes in VR. I hope you are enjoying this series so far, if you do, please consider subscribing or leaving us a like. If you would like to have access to our full source code, feel free to join our Patreon. If you have any questions, we are happy to answer you in our Discord anytime. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.